Baruch Haba. <clears throat> it is good to get a chance to speak with you uh, guys uh, again. And uh, this video here is, I'm, I, I want to deal a little bit with the subject of divine healing. And I know that may sound kind of odd for my Jewish brethren. And, uh, but, but when I say <clears throat> odd, I, I, it's because of Christianity is more known for that expression, the word divine healing. But uh, I want to share, though, with my Jewish brethren just some, something that they're common, we commonly understand anyway, is that we know that God heals. So we have seen many cases uh, amongst the Jewish people in Israel, the, the miracles that God has done for our people. Uh, even myself, when I lived in uh, Jerusalem, uh, he directed my path out of a suicide bomber back in 2004. <clears throat> but I, real quick, I want to read to you Deuteronomy uh, chapter 32 in verse 39 says, um, that reading in English here, See now that I, even I, am He, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. This is Hashem speaking here. Um, and one other scripture I want to read real quick to you, and I'm going to read this to you, and I'm going to, we're going to go back to this later this week here. I, I made a promise to those of you that, uh, that felt in your heart uh, to help support this ministry that I would uh, try to dedicate my time. I want to dedicate myself full time. Um, I feel the passion in my heart to do so, but not able to do that unless God makes that way. And he's put that on some of your hearts, and I thank you for that. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, to get to, the, to, to what we want to talk about here, in Hezekiah, excuse me, in the book of 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, many of you uh, are familiar with the story about Hezekiah and how that uh, he became sick unto death and the prophet told him to, uh, you know, that he would die. <clears throat> and then he wept bitterly, put his face against the wall, wept bitterly to, to the Lord and asked him to spare his life for 15 more years. And when he did this, the Lord said to him here, turn again, or to, speaking to the prophet of God, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, uh, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. Now, we're going to discuss this a little bit later this week because as I was reading the, the scripture this morning, God began to deal with my heart on this. And uh, there's some fascinating insights that we're going to be able to get on this. I will give you just a little hint on that before we talk about healing. And that is that third day, and he defends the city, defends the, 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 the city here again uh, for his sake against the king of Assyria. That is that wonderful, beautiful type of how uh, back in Hosea, when God said, in the third day, I will gather them again. And we are in the third day from Hosea's prophecy. And here God has hidden another place in here. Hezekiah's <clears throat> healing and the time that he goes up to the house of the Lord is a beautiful shadow of what Hashem would do in the days that we're living in now and what's about to occur. So I want to do a teaching maybe at the end of this week on this. Uh, I say the end of this week, this weekend actually. Uh, hopefully uh, many of the Christian people worship on Sunday, the Jews on uh, Yom Shabbat. And um, I would like to be able to take and maybe Sunday put this out for you, a, a, an in-depth study on Hezekiah as it relates to Israel. Fascinating study. <clears throat> anyway, we get back to uh, Deuteronomy, and we find that Hashem is speaking there, and He says He's the one that heals. He is that one. And for my Jewish brethren, this is where, with you, I can, I can stand and I can relate that... Um, when we look at Jesus, Jesus is not a second God. He can't be. He cannot be a second God because plainly God says in Deuteronomy uh, here that there is no God with him. Uh, so if we were to try to 
Uh, if we take in Christianity and try to put Jesus as a God that is there, standing there with the Father, sitting there with, you know, during this time before he comes to his earthly ministry, then we have a second God there, and that's not the case. And I don't even really think that the Trinitarian people really mean it in that regard either. Uh, I know there are, uh, in Christianity, there are people that believe in what they call oneness. Um, well, let me just say this, as I said to you before. I believe that God can manifest himself as he chooses. And so in that regard, that's where we come up with Elohim, because of the pluralization, showing that God can manifest himself in different ways. And I'm not really wanting to get into a study on that. I want to talk to you about divine healing. But because the scripture says here, we find in Deuteronomy 32, he says, uh, I even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. This is Hashem uh, speaking on this regards right here. Um, you know, when Jesus came to this earth and he healed the sick, he raised the dead, uh, this should have not have been a strange thing to us for these things to happen. Even the man that was blind that was healed, he said, has there ever been uh, a, a man that was blind that received his sight, you know, blind from birth? And, of course, the answer was no. Uh, we also, though, from uh, the Tanakh, we see that when Elisha was dead and buried and they brought a, a man and laid his bones upon his grave, he rose again. Did that make Elisha God? No, but it was God that was living in him and his bones were anointed because of that. But when it came to that, the healing gift that was in Christ uh, Jesus and Jesus himself, Jesus of Nazareth, it lets us know then that Hashem was inside of him. Inside of that human body was Hashem. And that's what is really beautiful. That's, that was another testimony of who he was. You know, the body was the Son of God, but inside of that body was Hashem. It was... Um, the Almighty God, El Gibor, you know, that's who it was that was inside of him. Now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit because I know that there's many, especially among the Christian world as well, that believe in divine healing. And when it comes to stepping out on faith to believe all of God's Word, to, to see that healing manifested in you, that's a little bit about what I want to talk about. It's not so much of, you know, because I know there's a lot of debate over the issue of the identity of Jesus and for the Jewish people, and I, I kind of say some of these at the beginning, you have to understand, my Jewish brothers, this is a stumbling stone for them, and, it, and it's very difficult. That's why the scripture says, the, you know, the cornerstone that the master builders rejected would, would be a stumbling stone, and that is Yeshua. That is uh, Jesus, that this, that where we find this at. But that cornerstone becomes the headstone, uh, showing, you know, the rest, you know, the, well, we won't get into that. Let's go into the divine healing. I want to talk to you about that because in my own life, I have seen the wonderful, miraculous power of the Almighty in, 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 in works. Uh, and I, I, I want to tell you, too, I do not believe that anyone is a divine healer. Uh, that would, you wouldn't want to be called a divine savior, so as you certainly don't want to be called a divine healer. That doesn't sound right. On, the only one that can heal is God. And so when we look at divine healing, uh, someone might say, well, I have a gift of divine healing. You may have a gift to pray for the sick and cast out devils. That's what Jesus said that he would give you, was that ability to cast out those evil spirits that causes sickness, but it doesn't mean that you that you are a divine healer. You're not. There's only one that can heal, and that's God, plain and simple. Uh, Jesus himself it just displayed the fact that God was in him, that he was able to raise the dead, uh, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. You know, this there's we could really get into that, and I'd like to get into that with you a little bit more. But I'm wanting to really just kind of touch with you real quickly on a personal testimonial level in this case here, so you know that. God can heal, and He can heal you. It's just a matter of believing it, and just don't doubt it. Hold to it. Um, 
I can recall, even in my own life, you know, personal testimonies where God has healed me uh, miraculously. Uh, sometimes it was over time. Uh, sometimes it was instant. Uh, I broke my ankle when I was 19 years old, and I cried out unto the Lord and was instantly healed. Doctor verified later that my ankle had just snapped. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, by doctor's own testimony that, that I had broken my ankle, but yet I was instantly healed, walked perfectly normal afterwards. And, and, and for my Jewish brothers, I, you know, I cried out in, in the name of Jesus that, that this would happen. And I know that's tough to take. It's hard to understand. But remember, I, it's not that I believe it's some second God or something. No, I believe that that was Hashem in Him. And His name means uh, Yahweh's salvation. So it's not, it's not calling out into another God. It's still calling out to Jehovah, uh, to Hashem. And so, and forgive me, I know my brothers, that we don't know how to say the divine name, but God has promised that he will restore that to where we can worship him uh, in, in this regard. And I believe this is why the question is, Moses asked, they will ask me, uh, Mashimo, what is your name? What is his, or what is his name? And, uh, and so he tells him, Ihaye Asha, Ihaye, uh, I will be that which I am. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to share with you just a quick testimony about my mother. My mother, by the way, has gone on to be uh, with the Lord uh, back many years ago. In fact, she passed at the age of 49. But about two years before my mother's passing, uh, and she was a Jewish woman, she did not practice Judaism at all. Uh, the family had kept that secret, so for her it was, it was she knew that, but it was less of a knowledge in the family. Uh, her father was the one that kept that secret pretty much. But at any rate, my mother had gotten an air embolism by the doctors uh, when they were checking for cancer in her lungs. Uh, they had they seen a, a, a spot on her lungs and they wanted to get a biopsy and they accidentally injected air into her veins which went to her brain. Uh, it not only uh, caused her to lose her sight completely, it also caused her to be a quadriplegic. It caused her to... Um, to go into to go into a coma shortly thereafter, and um, and she actually died as a result of that of that coma. I can remember and just to share with you. I remember the doctor telling me one day, he said, "Stephen, we've done all we can to save your mother's life. She'd been in a coma for five weeks, and he said there's nothing else we can do for her. She's going to die." And I said to the doctor, I said, "You know, doc, I really appreciate." your honesty, your candidness with me. I was my mother's closest heir at the time, so therefore I made the decisions, you know, as far as her well-being. I said, but you're looking at a book that tells you she's at her end. I said, but I'm looking at a promise of God that says she will live again. And he told me at that point, he said that, he said, I appreciate that as well. And he said, my son, he said, that's all you have left is that. Um, so I left, I went back to work. Uh, at that time, I cleared land for a living. I did that for about three years with uh, a, a wonderful uh, gentleman by the name of Clay Wise with Pioneer Land Clearing, him and Ray Perdue. Um, and while I was uh, clearing uh, on a field one day, my boss came out to me, uh, had his cell phone with him. And then back in those days, it was, um, Cell phones were big. It was not very commonplace. Not everyone had one. That's that's been, oh gosh, that's been 20 years ago, I reckon. So cell phones were not as common back then, <clears throat> and or no more than that, probably 22 years ago. Some some no about 20 years, 20 21 years ago. I remember my oldest daughter being a, a little baby at the time. Uh, but at any rate, uh, so he comes out there and he tells me. He said, "You need to call home." you have an emergency and so I called home and found out that my mother had stopped breathing her pupils had dilated they didn't want to tell me she had died uh, she'd actually died at that time is what happened and I said I'm, I'm not you know they said you need to go to the hospital at once I said I'm not going and my family was like you've got to be kidding me this is your mother and I said then I'm no better than Rahab the harlot and yet she believed, and God gave her her entire family. I said, no, I don't know what all that constitutes, but I do believe, and I will not go. I said, though she be dead, God is obligated to raise her from the dead. 
Because you have to understand, not only did my mother not know Jesus as her Savior, she was also a drunkard. She had gotten into heavy into drinking after going through a divorce. And so I got off the phone. My boss left. I went down into the woods and I knelt down to pray. And I said, God, I have doubted you many times. I've made many mistakes. I said, but if I'm ever going to believe you, I have to believe you now. And when I got through praying, I went back to work. Worked till 5 o'clock, got off, drove down to the hospital. And when I came in, my sister met me, crying in excitement. And she said, Steve, you're not going to believe this. But Mama came back to life. And, you know, and she had, of course, she'd been in the coma, and she's out of the coma, and she's batting her eyes trying to communicate with the doctors. The doctors didn't know what to do about it. So a few days passed, and of course that was ex extremely exciting for me as well, and yet she was still blind and still quadriplegic. And I was out on that same job site still working. I can remember it to this day, up in northwest Florida. And I'm on that tractor working, and suddenly I heard, just as if I would be speaking to you, I heard a voice speak to me, and I've heard this voice many times in my life, seen it, seen it, seen this angel in a dream before, so I, you know, kind of sounding like him. And he said to me, pray for your mother's eyes. And I stopped the bulldozer that I was driving, and I just started crying. And I said, God, who am I to pray for anyone? But it is true. Mama needs to see. And I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. When I got to the hospital that afternoon, my mother had 20-20 vision. The neurologist who did not believe in God told my sister, I don't believe in any such things, but I will sign a document that says that this was a miracle. I wished I'd have been the guy there. I'd have got the document myself. Where there were three neurologists that worked with my mother. And, of course, my sister was the witness to that. And everyone was just ecstatic over her receiving her sight. And they said, there's no way. The, the doctor said, he said, I know you guys are excited about her receiving their sight. But there's no way that she will ever walk. You might as well get used to that and be prepared for that. My sister came to me, her name is Laura, and she asked me, Stephen, what about mama, her legs? And I started crying and I told her, I said, honey, I never asked for her eyes. I only asked to hear her say that she's saved. My mother ended up, as a result of what she's seen that God did for her, at the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, in other words, because of now believing that he, he has to be Moshiach, if he can open her eyes. She was like the blind man in the days of Jesus when he come along and he said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And when his eyes came opened, see, then he believed that he is Moshiach. What, how, what would you expect? He would have to be the anointed of God. And so my mother then accepted that. Not that it was hard for her. You have to understand, when you're what we call renegade Jews, you're not the type of Jews that were raised in Judaism to begin with. It's not hard for you to believe. And that's what a lot of my Orthodox brethren would say. Well, you know, she wasn't raised in Judaism, so it's easier. But no, brothers, you have to understand and realize that only Hashem can heal. So, then who is this man? Now, just to kind of conclude right here, let me just share this with you. She ended up believing that he was Mashiach. She gave her life to him. One day I came to my mother's home. I prayed for her legs. I prayed for her whole body, everything. 
And I began to see she got movement with her arms. Then she began to get movement with her legs. I came over to the house one day. And she said, I want to show you something. And my mother stood up from her wheelchair. And she walked to her kitchen. And it proved to me that yes, this man called Jesus, the one that I asked in his name for God to heal her, that he truly was the same. Yam hazeh et demol vehayam veleolam. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Who else? See? Mihu. Mihu. Atem yodim. Ze Yeshua. Hu Hashem. Think about it, my brothers. My sisters. Only. Only he, only, only Hashem could do something like this. He says so in his word. So it had to have been Hashem, the Ruach Kadosh, Be Yeshua. It's the only way it could be. God bless you and those of you that may be sick, that are listening to this. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's no respect of persons. What he has done in my own family's life, and I could give you hundreds of testimonies, he will do in yours. If you ever meet the same conditions, if you believe and don't doubt it, don't look at what the doctor says, don't look, I mean, I'm not against going to doctors, understand that. I'm not against natural pathic ways. I believe in all these things. If it'll help you, I'm for it. But sometimes you get to a place where none of this seems to work. That's the time. And some of you may, that's just your avenue. You trust God no matter what. You know, if you're a Jewish brother or a sister and you're watching this video, which I know you do, and there's something troubling you, I, I challenge you. I challenge you, you pray and ask God. If Jesus truly is Moshiach ben David, so God, I'm sick, I have need of you. If he is Moshiach, then in his name, I believe you and I will accept him as my savior. You deliver me of this illness. In his name, then I will serve him. I had a dear Jewish brother tell me that in Israel one day. If he will heal my sister, then I will serve this man named Jesus. Baruch Chaba, and God bless you.